Hello, hello, hello. Hi guys. Good morning. Welcome back to Nudo. Ki hal chal. I hope you guys are doing good. In this video, we are maximum average pass ratio. Okay, thank you for your time. It simply says that you are given uh, there is a school that has classes of student, and each class will be having final exam. Now you are also given a 2D integer array called as classes, as you can see. Classes array is given, and each class will have something called as pass i and total, which means. Pass I is that I know beforehand that I get class, which means any such specific pair which I am given is having total I number of students, but only pass I number of students actually are able to pass that specific class. For example, now I am also given some extra students. As you can see, these are the extra students, but these students will for sure, for sure pass. I mean, they are bound to pass. I just have to task because they are brilliant students and they are guaranteed to pass the exams. Of any class whatsoever, they class to go. They like they go to any class. Now, you want to assign each extra student to a class. So basically, these I have two students. I have three classes. I have to assign these two students to any of the classes. I can choose any of the three classes. Now, again to maximize the average pass ratio according to all the classes. What is the average pass ratio currently for this class? The pass ratio is one by two. For this, the pass ratio is three by five. For this, the pass ratio is two by two. I have to assign these students such that I know for sure they will pass, which means the numerator numerator will for sure increase, increase, and the denominator will also increase because it is adding in the total number of students. That is the reason you have to do a perfect, a most optimal assignment here of these two students. Now, if we see the constraints pretty quickly, we will see that students are one e five, which means I can individually go to every student and can ask, oh, which class you should go to. Again, this gives me a strategy of what I can think of. That's the first hint. I'm not use, I, I'll not use that, but still I'm telling you the other hints which you can use in contests and interviews. And ultimately, my length also is not that much big, which means I can somehow able to figure out. I'll, I'll be somehow able to figure out what's happening. Now, coming on back, uh, we'll simply say, okay, uh, they are just given what's the what's the pass ratio is, and I have to tell what is the maximum possible average pass ratio. Now, what is average? Simply, maximum possible pass ratio divided by total number of classes will be the num will be the maximum possible average pass ratio. Now, as I see. Let's go to every student one by one right now, and let's see what will be the impact. So currently, if I look at it, I will see that R zero, R one, R two. Simply, I am just calculating the ratio, corresponding ratio itself. R zero is one by two, R one is three by five, R two is three by like two by two. If again for the first student, if I try and say, okay, bro, let's let you go to class zero. If he goes to class zero, obviously he will pass. Total number student will increase. So I do a plus one here, plus one here. It will become okay. No worries. I will tell you the proof also. No worries. So you will see. Okay, the ratio will become two by three if he goes to class zero. Ratio will become four by six if he goes to class one. The ratio will become three by three if he goes to class two. Which class will be the best class for him to go to? I will find it. Who will give me the most impact? For me, the most impact is in ultimately the most impact in the ratio. So I will find out if. I would have gone to class zero. What is the impact? What is the ratio delta? It is zero point one six. What is the ratio delta? It is zero point zero six. What is the ratio delta here? It is zero. So if the first student would have gone to class zero, I would have got an extra of zero point one six. If he had gone to class one, I would have got an extra of this much amount. Else, if he had gone to class two, I would have gone to this much amount. What is benefit? For me, I want maximize. I want to maximize my ratio. I will let him go to class zero. Thus, you will see that he has gone to class zero now. Now, for class zero, the current ratio will be two by three. As you can see, earlier it was one by two. One student went to this class. He will become two by three. Remaining will remain as is. As you can see, three by five and two by two. Now, for the second student again, I will have to ask which class he has to go to. Now, you will say, okay, Arun, it is a three by four. If he goes to the class zero, it will be three by four new ratio. If he goes to class one, the new ratio will be four by six. If he goes to class two, the new ratio will be three by three. The ratio delta here is zero point zero eight three. Here is zero point zero six six. Here is zero. You will simply see what's happening. Oh, again, I realize that it is much beneficial for him to go to class zero, and he will go to class zero itself. And ultimately, 
to get me the final answer i will let him go to class 0 i will now calculate okay now my new ratio will become 3 by 4 uh, this will be 3 by 5 this will be 2 by 2 and i'll simply calculate the average of these ratios and that will be my answer but you saw okay simply this is how you have to perform now it seems pretty fine until unless you go pretty deep on why and what i did ultimately i am going and trying this for every student for every student because i told you in the very beginning i can try this for every student but is it what you were thinking also maybe not maybe you were thinking okay Aryan, i realized that for this specific class i would have done one very basic stuff and that very basic stuff would have been okay let obviously you showed me that it is much beneficial to go to class zero and i can see also it is beneficial for the, for to, to go to class zero so why can't i make all the students go to class zero itself doesn't it seem pretty normal and obvious it might be if you would have looked at this example pretty carefully if you would have let the person go to the class zero itself obviously you see first time the impact when he went when the first student went to class was 0 0.16 next time the impact reduced what if this impact would have reduced below others impact then obviously i would have chosen someone else if it is confusing let's see another example which is example number two in that again i took this is the initial ratio i i want to make my four students go to some specific classes i will say okay what if he goes to first class the ratio will be three by five or next class four by ten five by six three by 10, 11 delta will be 0 0.1 0 0.06 0 0.03 0 0.07 what is the maximum delta i can get i can obviously get the delta of at the class zero i will make the first student go to class zero okay he will go here the new ratio will become three by five like three by five remaining all will remain as is what if i make my second student go to which class okay it, it will be four by six if he goes to class zero four by ten five by six three by eleven Delta 0 0.06, 0 0.06, 0 0.03, 0 0.07. Ah, now it is for the second student. Now it is much more beneficial because first student has already gone to one class. This indicates that as students are going in, which means if I have some pass upon total, this is the ratio. If I add a specific student, this thing is decreasing. Thus, again, like the delta for it will actually decrease again i'll show the proof also but the delta will actually reduce thus at every step i have to figure out that which class will be much beneficial to actually have an impact and thus i realized in this case i should make the second student go to class three okay if he goes to class three new ratio for him will, be, will become three by eleven but right now only i have let two students go there are still two students remaining okay again find that again find the corresponding delta I will figure out that oh maximum delta is by class number zero i will let the third student go to class number zero although this also has the same delta so you can make the other person go here also if i let the person go to this specific class class zero the new ratio will become four by six which is the new and remaining all will remain as is again there is a fourth person remaining check okay with that which, which has the maximum ratio okay this has the maximum ratio let the fourth person go to this class if the fourth person goes to this class this will be the new ratio else remaining will remain as is now after all the full after all four students have gone to each class this is the final ratio i have to find the average of this ratio and i know this is maximum because i tried for every student touch its corresponding maximum ratio and thus if i do the av like if i do the summation of these ratios divided by total which is the average i get the corresponding answer which is my final answer cool I hope you guys got it. If you still want some mathematical proof, let's see. Again, as I told you in the very beginning, the ratio is PC upon TC. If you add one student, this will be the new ratio. If you would have added the two students directly, this would have been the new ratio. If you would have added the three students directly, this would have been the new ratio. Now, your ultimate task is to just simply find out that what is the impact at every addition of a student. So I'll compute the corresponding delta one, which means, okay, the when I add one student versus the original, which I had, I will find that the corresponding delta one is this value. Again, just focus on numerator and this piece of denominator. What if I would have had it two students, but now I'm now comparing how much extra I would get. I will simply realize, again, you can just see the 
corresponding mathematics here i will simply again my numerator remain as is my denominator actually increased which means my delta 2 is bound again make sure pc is always less than tc pc past students is always less than total students right so this is always positive but still my denominator is actually increasing which means my delta 2 will always decrease right and again same way if i do a one more step delta 3 you will simply realize my delta 3 is tc plus 3 upon plus like into tc plus 2 which means my delta keeps on decreasing as i am adding any new student so it is highly important that i always check my delta again that which will be the best impact I will get if I add a corresponding new student. Now, as you can simply see that at every point you are checking for highest possible delta. So any data structure which will give you the highest value in a very least time, simply max heap or maps or sets. Obviously, uh, standard is max heap. So we'll simply use max heap to get the corresponding highest possible delta. We'll get this out from max heap. We will simply say, okay, this is the corresponding class he should go to. I will get him to that specific class and put it back to my max heap because I want to repeat this step for all of these students. Cool. Let's see the code. It's exactly uh, same as what we discussed. Firstly, I will have the corresponding max heap. In that max heap, I will firstly go on to all the classes because I have to build the initial heap. I will simply say because again, max heap by default, if it is sorted, it is sorted by the initial value. Now, there are multiple ways to solve it. Uh, in Java, you can build a class and take a class itself. And in C++, you can have a pair of pair. But I'll rather prefer not to have a vector because that will take more. Uh, time and space also. Now, uh, I'll go to every class here and for every, again, when I say class, we have multiple n classes I have in my question. I will compute what is the corresponding delta. Delta is nothing but as you can see, if I add a one student, if I add only one student versus I had original ratio. So this is the corresponding delta as I showed you in the dry run also. And then I will store the corresponding other values, which is PC and TC. Here I have stored PC and TC, here is a delta I have stored. Now, because my max heap first argument is delta, so this max heap will be sorted by this specific delta itself. Then I will try to get out for every student what is the maximum delta class and simply add that plus one into that corresponding class. So I'll firstly get my corresponding pass, I like pass and total for that specific class, which has the maximum delta simply make sure to add a plus one and put it back to your max heap. Why put it back? Because obviously I'm just once, this is for just one student. I have still more students remaining. I have to repeat this process again and again. And ultimately, now I have to find the average. Average is nothing but until my max heap is empty, just get out all the elements from my heap. Just compute its corresponding sum. Again, here I'm just computing the, the corresponding sum. And ultimately, I want to find the average. Average is sum divided by the number. So I just did like hit the division. So if I just tell you by the, with the help of dry run, so this portion is nothing but if I show you, this portion is nothing but this sum, this sum. And the last step of return is nothing but this sum, which I've already computed, divided by the total number of classes. And this is my corresponding answer. Because you are using a max heap, so this step will take n log n time because considering you have n classes, you have m students, it will take m log n time because my heap contains n elements. So getting out an element, maximum element will take log n time. And again, to empty out your max heap will again take n log n time. Thus ultimately it will be n plus m log n time, which you will be taking. And space will be O of n here because of the max heap. I hope you guys got it. If yes, then please smash the like button. Bye-bye.